day. Same shirt. Welcome back to the Star Wars Expanding Universe. You know, either by Disney or Count Lucasfilm. Which are really slice it. Legends. I know I should sound more excited, and I am. Because this story was excellent. Um, all the stories I'm going to be talking about are. But Obsession in particular. When I talk about it. Um, it just really, really makes me hate Filoni now. But we'll get to that. Anyway, welcome back. Um, today I have some more Republic comics for you. Uh, and the five-issue miniseries, Star Wars Obsession, by Hayden Blackman. Starting with a short Clone Wars adventure, is Life Below. It's a little story with Quinlan Voss. It's nothing much, but I don't know where else you would put it, so here you would go. Then we get to Republic issues, 72 to 73. This is basically Quinlan Voss trying to find out who the second Sith truly is now that he's reformed. And he swears on his life that he never actually worked for Dooku, that he was only ever trying to use him to get to what he wanted. He gets the impression that Sora Bulk is the second Sith, which he isn't. Um, we also have stuff going on with Master Thome, Quinlan Voss's former master. Um, as he's also trying to search for Sura Bulk. Uh, also, in the background, we have um, these clones of this particular race being made to um, train in the Inzadi assassin way to become a thorn in the Jedi's side. We also learn that we are five months away from the events of Episode 3 with the Battle of Coruscant. So that's interesting as we start hearing things about the Outer Rim Siege is about to become a thing. So we're setting up the stage for episode three. Um, and overall, it was a really good little... Uh, it's just two issues, which is why I don't have too much to say on it, but it was really good. Up next, we have Star Wars Obsession, uh, which is uh, the five-issue series. This is basically where all the issues arise. Obi-Wan is searching for Ventress because he wants to redeem her. Issue being that these issues act as if the last time we saw her was in the Republic comics, which it was. However, I tried to include all of TCW in here, and I put it in the final year of the war. Or I tried to. In Filoni's Clone War, she's a bounty hunter. Anakin has met her after the fact and knows that she's kind of a neutral party now. That would require more than retconning one episode. It would require a lot. So it's kind of this thing that you're stuck in, which I'm not exactly sure how to fix. And I don't, there might not even be a way to do that. This story, more than anything, I think has made me completely understand Mandalore on YouTube's point of view on TCW. And why if I ever go through the expanding universe again. I might skip TCW now. I might never include it again. He's searching for Ventress. Also there's a mention of Padme. Not being used to the scar that Anakin has which. She's seen Anakin several times if we're following TCW, so it makes no sense with that. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of issues like that. That being said, this issue has some really cool stuff in it. Uh, these five issues. And it's an overall really good and touching story and a good way to end Vendress's character. Um, arc. In Legends. I personally prefer it to what we saw uh, in 
Filoni, even though it kind of leaves it off to where her becoming a bounty hunter could be a thing. But it couldn't have happened before. So it's this whole thing. That being said, it was still really well done. And I really enjoyed these, these issues. Um, I definitely think it's worth your time. Sorry. It just broke me because it's like, well, this doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense because TCW. But of course, TCW came out after. It just caused irreparable harm. Like everything else, I can make some excuse. I can put some retcon to fix it. I, I, I don't know how to fix this. And so I'm left in this bad place. But overall, those five issues were written absolutely fantastic. There's a lot of cool action stuff. A lot of cool moments. What in particular they're getting in spoilers. So I definitely think it's it's worth your time. And guys, that's pretty much it. Short little video here. If you enjoyed this video, get a thumbs up. Sharing up a ton. Up next, we have... Uh, fit, we're finishing off the Young Adult series of Boba Fett with books 5 and 6. Um... And then we have the rest of the Republic comic, or a couple more Republic comics, Order sixty six. Uh, well, that will come. That will come later for you. Order sixty six. So let me talk about that. Public comics, and Labyrinth of Evil, and that's basically it till we get to episode three. So I hope you all join me for that. And until next time, guys, may the force be with you. If you don't care about spoilers, stay. If you don't, now it's time to leave. So, I really enjoyed in issues 72 to 73 of the Republic comics, um, the whole setting the stage for episode 3. I thought that was really cool. Um, also the Thome flashback in the very beginning, which was shortly after Geonosis, when you have Thome and Sorbulk fighting, um, uh, Dooku, because Dooku is just really cool. But there's pretty much all to say there. There's also a short little comic called Routine Val Val Valor. There's nothing much to it. It's just a mission going on during the Clone Wars. But we get to see Cody kick some major butt. So that was pretty cool. And then next up, of course, we have Star Wars Obsession by Hayden Blackman. The whole final arc of TCW ruins this. And this is the whole thing because at the final arc of Filoni Clone Wars... Ahsoka's on the run, and that's all great and stuff, but Ventress is a bounty hunter, and she's seemingly neutral at this point. But that is not the perception we get of Ventress here. And so it's just really, really frustrating. However, the coolest part about this whole uh, five-issue comic was Dirge, the bounty hunter, returns after like a year of no action with him. And we get to see Anakin pre-Vader take out Dirge. And the only way, really, that you could realistically kill somebody like Dirge, who can literally come back from being exploded, which is to throw him into a sun. Which is also a nice parallel, because it's like poetry, it, it, it rhymes. You know, George Lucas, it's, it's like poetry, it, it rhymes. Um, but... Uh... <laughs> In the legacy comics, which are 150 years or something, 30 years after episode 4, his Anakin's great 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 grandson, or maybe a little bit less great, something, one of those, would take down his villain, his main villain, by chucking him to his son, which is just really cool. So, I like the parallel there. Um, but yeah, that was the coolest part of the, of the five issues for me. And then, of course, the way Ventress goes out or goes out is really cool. And I thought it was really thematic and everything. And I thought it was really good. Um, the Dark Horse and Star Wars just beautiful. There's not a single thing that they do wrong, it seems like. Um, and I was really excited to read it. It's just, it's so jarring to have just finished TCW, which I know came out later, and then go to this. And I, th more than anything else, this, this would, this would be the main reason why I understand why people just chuck out TCW entirely. Like, it's really bad.
That being said, it's a phenomenal story. And if you're one of those people who skip TCW, then this is this will just blend seamlessly and you'll enjoy it a lot. So that's pretty much it, guys. Enjoy this video, give a thumbs up, sharing up such time, and I'll see you in the next video.